What is the farce all about? It's about Priya Shaha, a Bangladeshi Hindu who is also the leader of an organization named Hindu Buddhist Christian Unity Council. She met President Donald Trump recently and conveyed her grievances and also sought his help. Thank you. Thank you. I am from Bangladesh and here is the uh, 37 million the Hindu, Buddhist and Christian are disappeared. Please help us for Bangladeshi people. We want to stay in our country. Yeah, still there is 18 million minority people. My request is please help us. We don't want to leave our country. Just help us to stay. I have lost my home. Uh, they burned my home. They taken my land. But no judgment yet taken place. Please. Who took the land? Who took the home and the land? Uh, the, fundamental, the Muslim fundamentalist group. And they are, uh, always they are getting the uh, political shelter. Mm -hmm. Always. I know Thank the you. president has to get on. So. Priya Shah, she met the leader of the free world, Mr. Trump, and she complained that about 37 million Hindus, Buddhists, Christians disappeared from her country, Bangladesh. She also mentioned that there are still 18 million members of the minority community who are still living in Bangladesh. And she wanted to stay in Bangladesh. And she sought President Trump's help to solve the problem because 37 million people of the minority community simply disappeared. Bangladesh is in a shock. Why? Because we Bangladeshis consider Bangladesh to be the ideal nation for religious tolerance, at least in South Asia. Bangladeshis take an immense pride in that claim. Let's check some facts first. Population of Hindus have fallen from 22% in 1951 to 9.5% 9 in 2011 in present-day Bangladesh. So from the census, we get that we are missing just about 12% of the minority community. The percentage of Christians and Buddhists form about 1% of the population today. The missing percentage of mainly Hindus, followed by Buddhists and Christians, well, would aggregate about 19 million if you take present-day Bangladeshi population, which is almost 170 million into account. But even Priya Shaha said there are still 18 million people of the minority community who are still living in Bangladesh. So is she claiming that the total population of the minority community should have been 37 million plus 18 million, that means 37 million she claimed are missing and 18 million who are still living. So is she claiming the total minority community's population should have been 55 million today? If the minority population were 55 million today, then the percentage of the minority would have been 30% today. So is she definitely giving false information to the president with an ulterior motive? Why did she give such a wrong information deliberately? We Bangladeshis have a serious reasons to feel insulted. What does she mean by 37 million people of the minority community, community disappeared? Were they killed or were they simply taken off the census? Did they leave Bangladesh? Did they convert to Islam? Under any circumstances, the use of the word disappeared is of serious nature. According to Indian statistics, there are about 8 million people of Bangladeshi origin living there. Now, that is in present-day India. And about 2.5 million Indian Muslims are living in Bangladesh, according to Indian government's data. Bangladesh, according to Indian government's data. The percentage of Muslims in India have increased significantly as well, almost by 5% over the last seven decades. The birth rates, um, if you consider the birth rates of Hindus and Muslims, and take the parity into account, you will see 
The Muslim birth rate is higher than the Hindu birth rate. But even if you take that into account, the Muslims should have increased by 2% over the last seven decades. But why the Muslim population in India have a reason by 5%? Why? Moreover, if 37 million Hindus had migrated to India from Bangladesh, then that would have rather caused an increase of percentage of Hindus in India. But this did not happen. The percentage of Hindus are falling by the year in India. During the partition of India, The greatest migration of humans happened in human history. Bangladesh cannot be blamed for that. There were two significant politically motivated religious riots in East Pakistan in 1950 and in 1964. East Pakistan, that is today's Bangladesh. But the exodus of Hindus from East Pakistan did not number in millions during that time to cause massive drop of Hindu population in East Pakistan. They were in hundreds of thousands, not in millions. In 1971, there were an exodus of 10 million people from Bangladesh to India temporarily during the Liberation War. But most of them returned within a few months after the Liberation War ended. And the Indian government was promise bound to return them to Bangladesh. Indians couldn't afford to keep them. Indian government had kept them in allocated camps and didn't allow them to migrate to other parts of India. This is confirmed by a research work in McGill University of Canada's website. In India, support for Bangladesh stems from hopelessness in the face of over 8 million refugees. Calcutta alone accepting a quarter of a million in 48 hours. And the wish by a minority to invade East Pakistan, return the refugees, and avoid an almost insuperable problem for India herself. But the Hindu percentage kept decreasing. There has not been any major riot in Bangladesh since 1971 to force Hindus out of Bangladesh in millions. Yes, there were a few unfortunate politically motivated attacks against Hindus, but those attacks couldn't have resulted in massive exodus of Hindus from Bangladesh. Then what is causing such continuing decrease? This has to be owing to massive conversion. We must not forget that Islam is a missionary religion like Christianity. BBC confirms Islam is the fastest growing religion in the world. This is BBC News. All other major news media confirms Islam is the fastest growing religion. EWTN News. By the year 2070, the number of Muslims could equal the number of Christians around the world. That's according to a study by the Pew Research Center. Over the next four decades, Christians will still be the largest religious group, but Islam will grow faster than any other major religion and make up 30% of the world's population. If we check South Korean demography, Christian population has increased from 1% to 30% over the last 100 years. So does that mean 30% of Buddhists disappeared from that country? We can't deny conversion when most of the Hindus of Bangladesh belong to lower caste Hindu, who are also the most deprived members of the Hindu community. They are still considered the untouchables by overwhelming majority of higher caste Hindus. If you check the maps, you will see that Islam and Christianity spread most in India, sub, most in India's subcontinent, where lower caste Hindus are historically more prominent. In India, even today, after so many laws to safeguard the low caste Hindus, 
22% of the higher caste Hindus control 41% of the Indian wealth. In all the schools, I wanted to feed the children. And the villagers opposed me and they said, we will not let our children eat with those children. And I said, why? They said, because they're untouchable. They can't eat in the same place. They can't drink from the same tap. I put in water lines to the school and at night they broke them because an untouchable had taken water from it. So it was desecrated. Today, Bengalis live in Bangladesh and in Indian part of West Bengal. 27% of the West Bengal are Muslims and the rest are mainly Hindus with significantly high percentage of higher caste Hindus. Whereas the Hindus of Bangladesh are mainly of lower caste Hindus. After the British made Calcutta the capital of British India, higher caste Hindus have started dominating the lower caste Hindus and Muslims of East Bengal that is present day Bangladesh. British Viceroy Lord Curzon divided predominantly Muslim and predominantly Hindu Bengal into two parts in 1905. But that resulted into serious terrorist activities by higher caste Hindu groups all over India in the name of liberation movement. One of the groups was called Onushilan Shamiti. But Muslims and lower caste Hindus were happy after the partition as Dhaka, the main city of East Bengal, got attention from development works again. The higher caste Hindus were sucking the economy of the working class Muslims and lower caste Hindus of East Bengal. The British gave in and partition ended, that is partition of Bengal ended in 1911. So victory went to higher caste Hindu. They were called the Jamindars or Barons who owned the lands where the lower caste Hindus and Muslims worked. The capital was moved to Delhi by the British. The suffering continued and this was admitted by one of the founding fathers of India, Mr. B. R. Ambedkar, who later on converted to Buddhism and one of the Hindu founding fathers of Pakistan, Mr. Jagannath. After partition of India, West Pakistanis, that is present day Pakistan, started dominating East Pakistanis, present day Bangladesh, that is after the 1947 partition of India. They used to, they used Islam, that is the Pakistanis, West Pakistanis, used Islam as a pretext to keep us together. We rose up against oppression by the West Pakistanis and fought for a secular Bangladesh. Three million people died in one of the bloodiest liberation wars in human history under Awami League, who are in power today. <laughs> India today is harboring Hindu extremists who have been trying to divide Bangladesh. They formed Bangabhumi movement with Bongo Shena as their armed wing to create social unrest and havoc inside Bangladesh. In that pursuit, 400 insurgent Hindus tried to infiltrate into Bangladesh in 2004, which was thwarted by Bangladesh rifles. Indian border security forces promised not to allow separatists to build camps inside Indian territory. Bangladesh complained that there were over 90 camps still operating inside India. Situations have not bettered in any way. Chittaranjan Sutar and Kalidash Boido are living in Indian West Bengal who are still orchestrating plans with the support of various higher caste Hindu intellectuals to divide Bangladesh. India did help us during our liberation war, but we soon realized that the ulterior motive, ulterior Indian motive was to annex Bangladesh inside India with the help of 
with the, with the present BJP Hindu rule, Indian secret services agencies have been sheltering and grooming separatists and militant atheists like Sunny Roman inside their territory. I personally condemn killing of atheists or free thinkers, and the killers of free thinkers and atheists must be brought to justice, which is still remains elusive. But we cannot allow atheist militancy. Many Hindu fanatics in the guise of free thinkers are providing shelter and giving them fake IDs and phone numbers to continue campaigns against the culture and political unity of Bangladesh. The Hindus, Buddhists and Christian Unity Council is poised to separate Muslims from the, minority, from the minorities by bringing the minorities under the Hindu leadership, Hindu political leadership that is, and the pursuit is to eventually pave the way for Bongo Bhumi movement to take full-fledged political force inside Bangladesh. Present-day Bangladesh government has assured Priya Shah her right to be heard and we remain confident that Priya Shah's lies, Priya Shah's lies will be exposed if she faces the investigation which she might try to evade somehow. Priya Shah is highly educated. She can afford to send two of her children to study in the US. Her husband is a senior official in present-day Bangladesh government's anti-corruption commission. Her brother was a senior bureaucrat in Bangladesh. Do these things make you believe she belongs to a suffering community? And many news um, media are also exposing her ancestral history, where many of them are complaining that rather she is one of the land grabbers. As we know, many Hindus are using political powers to land grab other Hindus' properties in Bangladesh. Though the population of Hindus are still less than 10% in Bangladesh, yet almost 30% of government jobs are held by Hindus in Bangladesh. We have many Hindu national celebrities in all areas of our social living, including cricket, music, movie, and politics. What else does she expect? Bangladesh has the highest gender equality in South Asia. Did it happen by ignoring Hindus? Bangladesh has one of the fastest growing economies of the world. Less unemployment rate than India higher literacy rate than Pakistan and India amongst the youth. Has it happened by discriminating against Hindus? India is now one of the most racist nations on the planet owing to Hindu caste systems. Christians are attacked on a weekly basis according to all major Christian sources in India. And all over the world, we have seen various intellectual sources who are condemning treatment of Christians inside India. Priya Shah leads a so-called Hindu Buddhist Christian Council. What is the Muslim name in it? Hindu women do not get inheritance in Bangladesh as Hindu laws do not allow that. Why does she not do something to change that? Whereas in India, Muslims are far below the national average in every sector. There are Muslims um, in Bangladesh who are holding high political and bureaucratic powers. There are Muslim killed, Muslims killed and being forced to shout Hindu God's name in India. This never happened in Bangladesh. There is no proven record of Bangladesh's forcing Islam amongst Hindus. There, women are being gang raped in India for eating beef. But in Bangladesh, we do not have a single case where Muslims forced non-Muslims not to eat ham. In the Indian capital of Delhi, you cannot find beef at any restaurant, not even in McDonald's. 
not even at restaurants owned by Muslims or Christians. In Bangladesh, Christians eat ham. Please go and check. Yes, we do have problems in Bangladesh, but we are working towards making it better. What did she expect Mr. Trump to do? Interfere in the judiciary of Bangladesh? If she wanted to help Bangladesh by seeking help from a friendly nation, then she should not have given misleading information deliberately to the leader of the free world with a shocking description. We believe that she has political motivations behind her. That's why we Bangladeshis are in a state of shock. Bangladeshi government has assured her a free trial. Bangladeshi government has assured her a patient hearing. She needs to go to Bangladesh and face the questions. She must be prepared to answer the questions. She must clarify herself. Mr. Trump also met a couple of other Bangladeshis in that meeting. One of them was this man whose wife was killed during the recent Christchurch mosque attack. What did she do? What did he do? This man ended up forgiving his wife's killers. Listen to him. So Bangladesh also produces this type of great Muslims. I myself also condemned the terrorist attacks in Paris and got threats from Islamist extremists. Did we bother? No, because we are also learning to value freedom of speech. And also, we are learning to respect people's right to accept and reject any religion. We Bangladeshis are trying hard, day and night, to live up to our dreams, which we dreamt during our liberation war in 1971. I lost my wife, but I don't hate the killer. Uh, as a person, I love him. But... I'm sorry, I cannot support what he did, but I think somewhere along in his life, maybe he was hurt, but he could not translate that hurt into a positive manner. That's where he's doing wrong. People um, who carry out a terrorist attack, you know, they want people to be afraid. They want to incite between one group with another. Maybe they were hoping that if they target some Muslim, then maybe Muslim will retaliate. But we Muslim, we Muslim leaders are saying, that's not going to happen. We will not allow you to feel afraid or to hate other people because some of your uh, horrendous attack. Now let's listen to the American ambassador to Bangladesh. Perspective after being here for eight months and traveling so widely to recognize that Bangladesh is doing something remarkable. 